here. This is uh, Mr. Vanad. I think we can talk to him a bit. Vanad? Um, he's one of the seven survivors of the killing field time. So the, all the skulls that you see now are all the people that have been killed and whose body or skulls found in this area. Oh, it's awful. It's unbelievable. All the people that have been, that been killed here are coming from the prison called S21. This is terrible. I think everybody should come here. It makes all of us a little more evolved as human beings to see what some of us are capable of. You can't read about it and feel it. You need to stand here and look around here and feel what we feel. <laughs> Because I, I am a painter, and I was a painter back then. They used me to do painting of the S21 itself, as well as painting other prisoners. And of course, I was still on the black list to get killed. It's only the matter of time. Fortunately, we had this um, liberation in 1979. And because of that liberation, that's, that's why I was survived. Every single Cambodian family lost their families or friends. Every one of these existing holes was where they found bodies. Yeah. This experience, seeing the killing fields, is life-altering, and it puts your entire life into perspective. See, that is also the grave mm -hmm. over there. Magic tree. Oh, God. Ah, uh, that's just terrible. I can't even look at that. It's awful. Was he able to take anything good from this? Obviously, it's an atrocity. It's horrible. Is there a lesson from him that we can take with us today? He's doing his best in the spiritual way, in the political way, trying to get the people that survive, get the Cambodian or the West that visit this place or heard of this place, to know so that their voice can also be heard by everyone. They should be didn't just die like this because it's more than animals that they shoot for fun. It's, it's more than anything. So he's trying his best in any way to get the voices of the dead people to be heard. We'll certainly do our part to make sure this is never, it will never be forgotten. And we'll do what little part we can. This is actually the first time I've ever seen Albin cry or even get choked up. And we've been together for almost six years. So I know that this really had an impact on him. I think the way being in Cambodia and the killing fields will affect me is that I will understand why so many parts of the world have such different outlooks on things than we as Americans do. Seeing those people and what they've been through makes me realize that my life has been pretty easy. It's been pretty good and I will never take it for granted. You know, we lost so much. We have gone through so much. We just want to move on. I am very proud of being Cambodian, and I'm very proud of my country. Cambodians have profoundly suffered from a genocide, a stain on human history. And the suffering continues with a generation of orphans milling the streets. These homeless and abused children congregate at the Stang Manche waste dump, where they pick through rubbish and are frequently sold into prostitution. But one honorable organization is trying to help. The Cambodian Children's Fund works to provide shelter and education to Phnom Penh's most impoverished children. What was your name? What? Savon. Savon, that's pretty nice. Nice to meet you. I like what? Do I like makeup? <laughs> yeah, do you? Do you? Do you wear makeup? You're not wearing any makeup. 
Many of the kids live here full time, while others return to their families in the evening. The guiding light of the CCF is founder Scott Neeson, a man who gave up everything to save these precious children from certain tragedy. I was working at um, 20th Century Fox up until 2003 as president of International, and I left at the end of my contract period and did some backpacking. The plan was to go from Bangkok through to Delhi, and ended up um, meant to be two days in Phnom Penh. And ultimately, I spent my entire hiatus here, um, a little over four weeks. I had another contract, went back to work at um, Sony Pictures, same job, and I couldn't quite get out of my brain, and it was clear where my heart was lay, so I um, quit and moved here um, in December 2004. It occurred to me that the year, two years before, I was at the Academy Awards, you know. I was going to the Academy Awards and I had a Porsche, and now I was going to the garbage dump and had headlines. It was sort of like the ultimate sort of, the ultimate 180 degree turn. Couldn't be happier. I think everybody that has the opportunity to see and to experience the Cambodian Children's Fund should make the trip. Go there, meet the kids, because it is so heartwarming. And you just get to feel all this love from these kids who don't even know you. There you go. Blessing for us to be able to play with those kids. Yeah. You know? You got it. Good job. Our visit to Cambodia was really memorable and probably one of the most character-building, eye-opening experiences of the entire trip. Floating village. That was a surreal experience. It wasn't like anything I've ever seen before. That's where they live. Yeah. It's not like they're all poor, they're just simple. The Angkor architecture is so distinct. I've never seen anything like it in any other country. I was just shocked how they were able to accomplish that so long ago. Cambodia has an uh, excellent traditional cultural past, but they also have a painful past. And you can actually see and feel them progressing beyond that. It's, it's a unique traveling experience. I think of Cambodia with such fondness, with such appreciation, and such compassion. And when I get home, I want to learn so much more about it. <laughs> Definitely one of the most memorable places, memorable stops on our, on our journey.